All right, this is a graceful watchman. Now, today I have a gripe that I need to talk about, a uh, rant basically, which is how the hell can most of you call yourself a freaking American? All right, I'll try not to cuss, but if it comes if it happens, I'm sorry. How can you call yourself an American? I mean, the very essence of being an American is rebelling, is loving freedom, is being a rifleman, is being self-sufficient. You know, etc., etc. And none of you people do these things. None of you guys care. Okay? This is what brought about American culture. Now, I realize, you know, one third people back in the revolutionary times, you know, they supported the British. And only 3% fought against the British, you know, and another one third, you know, supported them. Now, I understand that. But you can't throw that at me because what those 3% did formed our culture, our Americanism, they it formed everything about this country and what this country is. And you were born into that country. And same goes with your ancestors. I mean, I know at least for mine, my ancestors date back to the pilgrims. And they came here for religious freedom. And speaking of religious freedom, you, you take back 1993 in Waco... And most of you just say, oh, they were just a, you know, the branch of Indians, they were just a cult. So they kind of, you know, they, they deserved it. You know, it doesn't matter what the government did because they, they were a cult. It doesn't matter if you agree with them. It's called freedom. Okay? It's called freedom. It's called being an American. You know, most of you are f afraid of guns. But that's what America was about. They, they brought guns over on the Mayflower. And then, because, I mean, one, they had to, to survive, and two, that's just our, that's our culture here. And most of you don't understand American culture. If you guys want a global society, uh, you know, you guys don't want nationalism or patriotism anymore, that's cool. Go to Europe, because they're all over that, you know? But don't come here, you know? Uh, I can't force you to leave, because you have the freedom to be here, you know? That's part of being an American. I have to accept your communist ideas. But, I'm serious, you know, if you don't like it, you might as well leave, because the few of us that are true Americans, we're not going to take it anymore, and there's going to be bloodshed in this country, and we're not going to be the instigators of it, um, but when it comes, we're going to be the ones doing a lot of the bloodshed, I can tell you what, we're not going to start it, but we're going to finish it. If you don't like it... If you want, you know, socialism without a fight, then you can go to Europe, you know? If you want to fight against us, then good luck. Because you guys are the anti-gun crowd, and we're the gun crowd. We know everything about our weapons. You know, many of us have served on... Uh, I would just suggest you go to Europe, because there's going to be a war in this country. See, that's the thing. Most of you people out there don't understand what's going on. You don't understand that this nation could have erupted in a civil war probably about over 25 times in the past 20 years. All right, there's been standoffs all the time. There's been standoffs almost every year, you know? There's the Bundy Ranch, there's, you know, the Oregon Pine dispute, you know, there's those guys back in uh, the, on the river in Texas, but um there's some ranchers down there in a dispute. You know, there's there's disputes all over the place. And I'm not specifically condoning any of these and saying that, you know, what Patriots did or people saying their Patriots did on all of those situations were good, but you have to realize that this country has almost erupted in the Civil War. Any one of those standoffs, if one side fired, it would have been all over. There would have been a war. There's a good possibility of it. You know, one side fires, the government says, you know, anybody linked to these groups is terrorists and they start going after them. You people need to wake up. Do you enjoy your freedom or do you want to be a slave? I think most of you want to be a slave. I honestly do. You want welfare. You want health care. You know, you don't want to provide for yourself. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to be responsible adults. You want daddy the state to do everything for you. What, what do you want to do? Do you, do you want to be an adult or do you want to, you know, go back to high school? Are, are you an American or do you just want to be, you know, a citizen of the world or something? 
Because you can renounce your U.S. citizenship. You know, that's a thing. You, you can do it. You know? Being an American is being a rifleman. That's what our country was always about. You know, it it's sort of a rite of passage thing, you know, to grow up and then go hunting, get your first buck. You know, you, you grow up around guns. Your father or your grandfather teaches you how to shoot. You know, not... People are afraid of guns now, and they don't even know anything about the gun. They say they're dangerous, but they don't even know anything about it. I'd be more afraid of someone with a knife, because knives you can get cut easily. A gun has, like, some guns have, like, five safety mechanisms on them. You know, you don't... You don't need... I would be more afraid of someone with a knife because he can act. He can just walk past me, and I can get I can get cut. A gun that's not going to happen. It's much more safe, you know. I'd be much more scared of someone, you know, swinging a uh, an axe around me than someone with a gun around me, even if it's loaded. You people need to wake up. You need to read the Constitution and Declaration of Independence. It's not that long, you know, I'm sure you have, you know, one day where you can, you know, half a day where you can go and read through the whole thing. It, I mean, you can spend like 20 minutes a day reading it, and you'll probably finish by the end of the week. Uh, it's a very short document. The Constitution is actually the shortest doc, uh, founding document, Constitution, out of any country. Because, you know, the, the message was, was simple. The message was that... We need limited government, you know. You read the writings of our founders. We believed in, they believed in limited government to leave the people alone. To let them prosper by themselves or fail by themselves. If you fail, you did it by yourselves. Nobody needs to pick you up, you pick yourself up. Maybe, you know, you have family that can pick you up. Maybe you have a local church that does a soup kitchen. But you don't need daddy of the state to walk you through every step of the way. Some people will say... Oh, but some people just need, you know, help, and then maybe they don't have family. Well, they have, I'm sure they have a town, I'm sure they have a community, I'm sure a local church will help them, they just don't look. And, you know, the thing is, is when the government does it, you're hooked on the government. They'll do everything for you, they'll give you, you know, a paycheck, stable, you know, and then there's no need for you to, to help yourself. Cause, I mean, you see it, and then there's no need for you to help yourself. As if it, if it was, you know, a, a soup kitchen or someone, you know, a family member, someone you care about helping you, and you knew these people, you'd be like, oh, well, I feel bad, you know, help, taking their money, you know, making them help me. I want to get off my feet. But if it's the government, you're just like, oh, whatever. You know, you don't know where the money's coming from. You don't see the people. You just get a paycheck. So people who argue that, they're enabling. They are enabling. Y'all say that the ideals in the Constitution are outdated. Yeah, prove it. That's just something you hear from the media. Prove it. Tell me how it's outdated. Because as a matter of fact, as a matter of facts, the ideals that the founding fathers got from the Constitution, that they put the ideals that they put into the Constitutions, those ideals, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them came from the Enlightenment. And the Enlightenment happened 200 years before the Constitution. How old is the Constitution? About 250 years old. Oh, about the same time, you know, the Enlightenment, the, you know, how old the Enlightenment ideals were. Yeah. So how come the ideals from the Enlightenment that were 200 years old when they wrote the Constitution, how come they weren't outdated when they wrote the Constitution, but now all of a sudden, 200 years later, they're outdated? How are they outdated? Y'all say, uh, oh, well, they didn't have, uh, they didn't have guns back then. They didn't have assault rifles back then. Military-grade assault rifles. Yeah? They didn't? Well, they didn't have internet either, you know? So, uh, I guess freedom of speech only applies to, um, you know, I guess freedom of speech only applies to pen and paper in newspapers. Right? 
Because they didn't have internet back then. So I, and now anybody can make a Facebook post or make a website and they can exercise their freedom of speech. And that's dangerous. It's dangerous for people to speak their mind and have anybody listen to it. Because, you know, not everybody back then had access to newspapers and articles to write. Or to write. So, now that they have access to the internet, we should restrict freedom of speech because it's dangerous. Right? Makes sense. I mean, you know, that's basically the same argument you're giving me for the Second Amendment. That they didn't have assault rifles back then, and now we do. So, um... We have to restrict it because technology has advanced. Well, technology advanced for the First Amendment, too. Technology advanced for the Fourth Amendment, too. Oh, wait, but there's a Patriot Act, and y'all think that's okay. So, you know, whatever, we won't bring that one up. You know, the Patriot Act is, you know, wiretap, whatever, you know. Uh, you know, you can wiretap without a warrant, read your phone calls, read your emails. You, know, you do all that. That's not an issue. I don't want my Fourth Amendment privacy rights anyways. I'm just a sheeple. If I'm not doing anything wrong, I don't have nothing to hide. So why can't they go through my stuff? I don't need privacy. Do y'all really trust the government that much? You know who else trusts the government? The Germans. You know who else trusts the government? The Soviets. The Russians, you know? Why would you ever trust in a government? Why would you ever trust people in positions of power? Don't you know that power corrupts? Do you read? Have you ever, you know, been on the internet? Have you ever read a book? Have you ever, you know, looked anything up having to do with philosophy and government and politics? Have you ever done any of that? Have you ever done anything? Or are you just a stupid sheeple who watches your TV all day and when the government says something, you do it? You know, people like Charles Dyer go to jail, they put some you know, bullcrap charge on him, and you're like, yeah, he did it, because the media said he did it. You don't even look good into it. If I told you right now, one of you, one of you sheeple out there, if I told you right now, yeah, there's this guy, uh, he was a former Marine called Char Charles Dyer, and, uh, you know, he went to jail. I'd be like, oh, what did he go for jail for? He's like, yeah, he, uh, he got charged with, um, you know, molesting his daughter. Well, he got convicted, so uh, he must have done it. So uh, he's a molester, and you know that's a pretty bad, bad crime. So um, you know he must have done it because nobody ever gets false charges on them. And you know, to you sheeple, that's you know that's it. You know, you hear about a manhunt down in Texas, and that's it. You know, he did it. He molested his daughter. No questions asked. You know, why, why is the federal government going in a state pro... Oh, I don't know. Whatever. He did it, you know. The federal government has jurisdiction over those things, right? Right? You know, if most of you sheeple out there, if I told you, you know... Because you don't look into the facts. If I told you, oh, did you know, you know, the hung jury was... Uh, it was a hung jury like two or three times because the jurors couldn't decide... They couldn't decide if he was innocent. That maybe maybe that should tell you something, that there's something up. Oh, they also tried to uh, bring him up on false charges on a 40 mic mic he had, 40 millimeter grenade launcher he had, and then he won that case. You know, maybe that tells you that there's something going on that the government was just trying to put him in jail. Uh, no, maybe he was just child molester and he really had 40 mic mic. Oh wait, but he uh, he was found it. He was found innocent on that. So um, oh no, but the media said he did mol child molester, so he he did it. You know he did it. Are you an American? What happened to statesmen? If any of you have ever heard of that term. What happened to statesmen? There is a time in this country, in the colonial era, where lawyers were illegal and any lawyer found would be killed. Did you know that? There is a time in this country where men were statesmen, where they would go and serve their people in their counties and in their districts and in their states out of the goodness of their heart. Because they were statesmen. They weren't 
politicians, they were statesmen, and statesmen were elected to the state legislatures. Statesmen were elected to the Congress. Statesmen were elected governors and presidents and senators. Statesmen, not politicians who made a career out of it, who spend most of their days in Washington, D.C. and have a big fancy mansion up there. And they don't know anything about the people they're serving. They don't live there. They don't live in that state. They live in Washington, D.C. At one time, they were statesmen and they lived in the district they were at. That's why Congress works so little days. That's why they're never in session. Because they were supposed to be statesmen, not politicians, not career politicians. They were supposed to be statesmen. Look that term up. Statesmen, not politicians. Politicians are corrupt. Politicians make careers out of lobbying and getting reelected. Statesmen care about you. Statesmen left their hometown, left their family to go and serve the gov- the people of the United States, not the government, but serve in the government for the people of the United States and for the Constitution of the United States. And they took an oath to that. And at a time, they meant that oath. At a time, it wasn't just some traditional thing that they took because it was expected of them and it was an outdated law. At a time, they meant it. And at a time, people paid attention to what their statesmen did. Anybody could be a statesman. And if you want a model of how this would work and how it was supposed to be, look at the state of New Hampshire, the live for your die state. Look at the state of New Hampshire. All right. And the politicians or the, the statesmen there, the state legislature there serve, they're all volunteer and they only make $100 a year. I might be wrong on the accuracy of these claims, but they only make $100 a year or around that. They serve, anybody can be a statesman there. Anybody can be a politician, if you will, there. Anybody can go to the state legislature. You don't have to be a career politician. You don't have to have a lot of money because they only make $100. So people aren't re, you know, getting reelected. People aren't making a career out of it. So you go to New Hampshire, you know, one out of 10 people, or, you know, maybe less than that, but, um, you know, you're bound to run into someone who was in the state legislature at one point if you just walk around New Hampshire for a little bit. Because almost everybody there has had something to do with their government. I mean, not almost everybody, but a lot of people. Because it's easy to be one. Because if you go, you if you are going to go there, yeah, you actually care. In New Hampshire, in the state of New Hampshire, if you actually care about your people, then the people you're going to elect and you know your state constitution that's another thing most of you don't even know about state constitutions oh there's a constitution in the united states yeah did you also know there's a constitution for your state oh i didn't maybe you should read that uh i'll do it one day <laughs> oh really okay how how have we gotten to this point in our history The freedoms that our founders and our ancestors have fought, bled, and died for, you don't even care. If the media says something, if you see it on the TV, it's fact. If the politicians say something, it's fact. If someone gets arrested or killed in a government shootout, the government's right because it's fact. They said that. They told you that. They're the authorities. They know all you Republicans out there and they think you're patriots. But when it comes to people like William Cooper and Charles Dyer, no, because you support the blue line. Look, I support police too. Their job's hard, but police have gone out of control. It's a fact. You know, I, I don't agree with a lot of these, uh, black lives matter protests because they're stupid and a lot of these black people are just trying to start shit with the cops and the cops shoot them because being a cop's hard and you know it's hard to judge sometimes i understand all that (laughs) 
but when the cops are getting, you know, military surplus M wraps, you know, when they're getting APCs, you know, and they're driving them down the streets, why are they doing this? You know, it's the job of the National Guard to, you know, put down rioters, not the police, but they're trying to militarize the police so they can do it all by themselves, right? You don't need the National Guard anymore. The National Guard can go and fight wars. Yeah, send the National Guard overseas, make the, you know, make a Gestapo here, and everything's fine. Just make a Gestapo here in the United States, make the federal police militarized, make the local police militarized, and, you know, just, just little puppy dogs of the federal police. And, you know, it's all good. Give all these police all this, you know, hollow point ammo. All these MRAPs, all these APCs. It's fine. They're not preparing for anything, right? Oh, what? FEMA has all these disposable coffins? Oh, no, we don't want to talk about that. They're, they're, uh, what? Wait, what? You said they're, they're renovating old, old bases and old POW camps? FEMA's doing this? Oh, we don't, we don't, we don't talk about that. That's scary. Rex 86, what, what's that? Oh, no, we don't talk about that. That's scary stuff. We don't, we don't want to mention that. You know, that's scary. That scares me. I don't, I don't want to think about that. I don't want to think about death. I don't want, I don't want to think about, you know, bad, bad times in this country. I just, I just want, I just want to live good. I just want to party on the weekends. Don't, don't bring that up. Don't talk about that. That scares me. Wake up. Wake up. 